Okay, so we're in the other room now, um, standing next to Ruben here. And this is 84-year-old female who in June 2014 had left calf claudication and a little wound on her left right toe that was uh, quite painful, uh, wasn't able to sleep. So back in June, we revascularized it and it healed nicely. But um, then she developed, uh, we, we saw her for her other leg, which we never treated, and it, she was getting numbness and, and rubrous changes there. But at the same time, a couple days later, even before we had treated the right leg, she developed some recurrent pain in the left leg. So when we did an angiogram primarily for the right leg, we retook pictures of the left leg. One of the issues she's had is that she's very sensitive to um, anesthesia. It puts her out for two days, and so she, she does not really like to be put to sleep at all. And, and, um, but yet, when we have her flat on her back, she moves a lot and is talking a lot, and we've had to. So what we're trying today is to uh, just do everything pedal and, um, and then keep it with just local anesthesia. So if you come, oh, let's go through our pictures. Next slide. Um, there's a tiny wound in the, the medial great toe. Go, next slide. This is her, these are her angiograms. Next slide. You'll see there's a stent on the left external iliac. Keep going. Yep. And then you'll see on the right, there's a nasty SFA lesion. Next slide. Um, lower down, pops open, two vessel perineal um, and posterior tibial runoff with the uh, occluded AT, which is occluded on an ultrasound as well down on the foot. Next slide. So we, we actually lasered that, angioplastied that. We got a dissection in the mid and lower portion. So we put an IDEV stent in with a good result. And what you're going to see is if you look above the IDEV stent back where it's a little smaller diameter. Uh, next slide. That's, next slide please. That's the lesion that came back. So our plan here is to puncture the posterior tibial. Go, go back to the other slide, just, uh, yeah. Um, and we're going to spin the lesion above the stent. So the stent, the stent is actually where it is wide open, the lesion is not. So we're gonna try to use the new 60 centimeter 125 CSI device, angioplasty it, add an additional stent from a pedal approach, which we'll do here, and then hopefully we'll be done and we'll be able to get her out the door pretty quick. So I'm about ready to do a posterior tibial puncture. I have a 17 megahertz probe on our, our Philips machine here. We have four of these Philips machines, but just one, one of the 17 um, megahertz probes. And uh, yeah, it's hard to see. Here's my hockey stick. So you should be able to see the ultrasound. And you can see right in the middle there, we, we color Doppler did earlier. You see the calcium in the vessel. Uh, so I have not yet numbed. I'm going to numb right now. And a little sting here, dear. You puncture these uh, transverse. You try to see them uh, long axis to axis. Yes. Um, initially transverse. Let me have you put your foot just like that. OK. Yeah, okay I'm going to need you to bend, bend your knee a little bit, please. Bend your knee a little. OK. We find often with some of the really densely calcified cases, you're scanning up and down. You're trying to find a window without calcium. But sometimes you're just sort of hitting an area of shadowing between Turn the lights lanes. down. <laughs> yeah, that was the problem in the case next door that was I was chasing the calcium around the room. And um, I finally got in. That's one of the reasons we wanted to do that before we went on camera. OK, sorry about my jumping ultrasound image. Where are we at? She moved from where we had her before. There it is, a little deeper. You have a sort of semi, uh, semi, uh, semi recumbent there, right? Say again? She's semi recumbent. She's kind of sitting up a little bit. Yeah, she's about 20 degrees up. I, I, I guess she did pretty well just that way. OK, so I'm hoping she changed her position a bit. Let's have the lights down, please. OK, she's, she's moving around. This hey, dear, you having we, pain? This is the discussion we had earlier, John, actually. OK, it, you know, can, I, happened, can I have you bend your knee? Frog leg her leg. Get a frog leg her leg. angle right there you bend your knee, really yeah? makes it more difficult to get into the artery versus having the probe. And the I need you to bend your knee. And the needle perpendicular to the uh, okay. beam of the can ultrasound. We need to, I need you to see a little more in the middle of your legs. I need your leg to f turn it sideways and let your leg bend out. There we go. That's very good. Well, I think this is important for everyone to see because uh, okay. Dr. Julian's an experienced guy doing this, but 
You know, when we show it to you, just sort of, you know, uh, you know, filmed in advance, it you know really looks very easy. But there's a lot of nuance to this: getting the patient positioning right, finding the best point at which to puncture the artery, dealing with patient uh, compliance issues, visualizing the tip of the needle at all points, okay. which is uh, you know takes some practice. Obviously, you're scanning above and below the plane of the uh, needle puncture. Uh, hopefully, some of you have had opportunity to use the uh, cadaver lab if you haven't done this before to develop that skill set. Yeah, we just had, I think, so you know, for, for it around operators a little bit. who are just He's learning to, to, to be able to access under ultrasound, it's very helpful, obviously, to have a uh, ultrasound tech there. Um, but I would encourage everyone to hold the probe themselves and try to uh, visualize the vessel and work the needle together, because you do have some advantage uh, by being able to fan the probe and really visualize the needle tip uh, when you handle both things together. Yeah. You, you find it the, the hard to have someone else hold the probe, because we don't know which way they've deflected the probe to find our needle tip, you know? I find the most successful means of getting tibial access is, is uh, if you see the needle uh, going into the subcutaneous tissue immediately after you pre go through the skin, instead of looking for it around the artery, actually see it in the subcutaneous tissue and then direct it down to the artery. Right. Yeah, it's far I, more efficient. I think that's one other reason you come in at a steep angle because you can see it longer. It's in the beam longer before it passes through the beam. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I tell people when they first start out is once you see the tip, just start bouncing. You know, your eye sees a moving object much better than a stationary object. So if you bounce it up and down, uh, it's easier to track on the ultrasound beam. Well, I asked about the you know, long axis because, you know, we'll start transverse, but not uncommonly, if we can see a good segment of artery in long axis, we'll kind of puncture it that way. You know, the advantage being that you know, the angle of the artery can be you know, changed to sort of try to hit a softer spot. And you have to be cognizant that you're scanning now medial and lateral, and you have to you know, re-deflect your needle to sort of hit the artery, and if you're calcified, you slide off. But at least we can be assured that we're sort of entering the artery at a reasonably good spot. Yeah, I like going long axis if, uh, if the artery is a little deeper, you know, one centimeter or deeper. Because uh, the other advantage is once you hit it, like you said, you can pick a spot to hit it. And once you hit it, you don't really have to move the probe to just advance the wire. So here's a shout out to industry. We need a even more echogenic, diamond studded, calcium penetrating needle. As we're doing more and more of this sort of work, oh, thank you. you know, it's not uncommon that you're going to get your needle down top of the artery. And if there's a lot of calcium and you can't find a sweet spot, it's hard to penetrate that artery. You know, calcium in the periodic table is right next to, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's, you know it's, it's a metal. It's, you know, it's that looks good, right Bill, next to iron. right there. Yeah, I'm trying to. See, you know, also far, you've, got, you've got to see that tip of the needle. That yeah. looks, you know, pretty right. reasonable. Yeah, so Dr. Julian is trying to sort of show Thank us the tip. The it's it's key, but it's not there. necessarily so we easy to see that tip here. with the shadowing like, and calcium. And, you know. mm -hmm. yeah. light up. You have some flashback there? It's hard to see. Right? I think it's red, yeah. 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 So for the, for the audience Center down here. Where are we at? Try to use the 70 degree yeah. center, angle and center close guys. the probe as much as you can. There you go, good. Okay, nice. start that picture. We've sort of inter? adopted a little bit of, uh, you know, some of the work that, you know, I, I know that uh, Jihad has done. I think uh, Arthur Lee does too, where we sort of watch that wire with ultrasound going up, uh, at least initially. And you can actually spin it and kind of move it around, avoid Being plaques, yeah, avoid dissection planes. So. Okay. See where we are. Okay, nitro. So we're gonna get some nitro and um, Marissa, are you ready to? Is it? Wait, I need. Um, let me give her two hundred, and let me have let me have a little contrast. Make sure. So this is an interesting right. sort of okay. lesion. You know, I, I think that you were kind of lulled in complacency with the first intervention when you had some plaque recoil at that stent margin. Maybe wouldn't want yeah, to criticize you, but didn't completely cover the lesion. I, you know, I don't think that's intimal hyperplasia so much. Maybe a little bit, but I think. A lot of that is... No, I don't think so know. either. I think it just is recoil. I think you're exactly yeah. right. Um, okay, so let's give her full dose of heparin. Let me have... Yeah, let's upsize to get the four French sheath in. The, what's this? No, I gotta, I gotta go back to the 018 and put the it's coaxial the together. The okay, what? Coaxial together. Okay. So, Bill, let me okay, ask you, so, the, um, uh, you mentioned that you can't check an ACT in the office. What, what do you do? You would do weight-based dosing, and then if it's a long we procedure... We do weight-based. When do you well, we'll give more. Um, when do you and, and it also depends on the. It, it um, I, I think it to me it depends a lot also on if I've stopped flow. I'll I'll be more uh, kind of in my mind. 
a dose more often. If uh, one of the things we like to do is we'll keep a sheath, sheath with saline open anytime we inflate balloons. So even if we happen to be a little under anticoagulated, we'll sort of have salinized the leg during uh, stasis. Um, but um, you know, maybe once an hour if if it um, is a standard case, but it might be more or less. Okay, so we are converting to a, a pinnacle sheath here. So and when you do that, I just want to see from the audience here, how many people, uh, the plan here is to do orbital atherectomy, how many people, first of all, in general, okay. utilize orbital atherectomy in their tibial practice? See a show of hands? So this is going to be a great demonstration, Bill. I'd say maybe a third to half of the audience. Uh, of those, you know, uh, okay, so uh, of we those do people, how many people would use orbital atherectomy in this lesion? That's interesting. You know, not many people Power raise up. their hand for that. And, you know, we like orbital atherectomy here. I mean, first of all, you know, it's got the right profile. It's easy Stop. to uh, use. Um, and obviously, um, you know, the system performs very well. And I think it addresses a principal problem. There's, so there's a lot of calcium in these vessels, which we don't appreciate. And, you know, a lot's been said about the plaque modification and low pressure inflation. And that's oh, true don't. as okay, driven so by the data. Go. But what we like up. even more is you now get more uniform balloon inflation. So you're not ending uh, okay. up yeah. with areas where you have overinflation and stretch injury and potential dissection and other areas of underinflation. But after you do the orbital atherectomy, we see that we get a very even inflation of the balloon throughout its, uh, its full profile. So we've actually um, uh, tried to ready. use a lot of orbital atherectomy in these cases, popliteal and tibial cases, even when we don't appreciate by fluoro the amount of uh, oh. calcification. You can't see? Okay. So, so John, what's your, what's, uh, your threshold okay. on using TAMI in some of your subset of patients that are obese, um, Out. Dif having difficulty laying down? Let's do run, 3CC. Would you consider using TAMI in uh, okay. these patients? Will they use atherectomy or any other form of therapy? Have you implemented that in your practice? Okay. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I talked about up front in those introductory slides about, you know, rationale for access, right? And one of them had to do with patient habitus, you know, wow, so and okay. other patient Going compliance. To. But, you know, this is actually to nice. I mean, you get a, a, a chunky, <laughs> overweight patient, you know, where anti-grade access, which you might desire, so you have good control, is more favorable. Uh, contralateral access is still not great. You have, you know, loss of torque control. And you can come right through the foot. And, you know, something you can sit the patients up a little bit. They're much more comfortable during the course of the procedure. There's less discomfort during the procedure and in recovery. So I think the TAMI, or transarterial minimally invasive approach that you guys have pioneered, uh, really is very, very valuable in that setting. Absolutely. It's very How long helpful. we had heparin on board? Three minutes. Okay. So we are um, about, we're going to get the new 60 centimeter CXCSI orbital atherectomy device, which we think with the 15 centimeter throw that it extra length it gives you will allow us to treat this. Of course, we're not treating the stent, so we're going to be kind of careful there. Do we have a balloon ready? A five, like a 560? Let's have that ready. And if you haven't been exposed to it, you know, there is now a new line of, uh, of crowns, which are four French compatible. So you can do TAMI. You can do which, these interventions, um, you know, solely from uh, the tibial approach. And even with the micro crown, talking about TAMI, you can theoretically come through the, uh, the uh, anterior tibial artery arch and then go, uh, you know, retrograde, or in that case, antegrade down the tibial perineal trunk with one device. Mm -hmm. It's got sufficient flexibility to spin through tighter uh, turns. So. Well, there's people on the panel here. Hey, Bill, which, what size device are you going to use there, CSI? Is it a, you're using a 125 it, micro? It's the 125, not, not the micro, it's the 125 uh, 60 centimeter solid crown. Does everyone on the panel which um, the I think they're going to be having, that's going to come out in a longer shaft region, before too long. Since it's up in the SFA. Yeah. Well, I think a solid crown makes a little more sense because you need a little more orbital effect with a bigger vessel, right? So, you know, that... Uh, yeah, I think a micro, micro and, is... And turn it up, but, you know, you're going to have to get... For this. In order to really impact the, you know, the full kind of luminal encroachment of calcium there, you're just going to need, uh, you know, more centrifugal force, you know, and I think that the uh, heavier mass crown might be a little bit better. I prefer that than taking okay, the so lower mass crown here. at a higher speed and potentially getting more. Our, know, our lady level. is, John, I, I didn't tell you this, she is uh, 4 foot 10. Right. And so this is, without even using my, my um, throw, I'm already in the lesion. So this is pretty, un I think it's a little unusual here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm watching on my right screen to see where the stent is. So let's get some, let's get some nitro. The flow's going. 
You give a lot of nitro during this uh -huh. through that side port. Every pass, you go ahead and give another 100, 200 micrograms of uh, okay, I'm nitro. Dr. Uh, Warren there, he can tell you what our... We, we don't do really long runs because we're just trying to take a little calcium off, the shell of calcium. Um, let's give some more. Actually, I'm going to pull my device back in the stent just to make sure I got a little flow going through because this thing was occlusive. It was so tight. By the way, while you're doing that, so I wonder this, if... I'm going to do this, I'm going to angioplasty, and I, we can get our stent open, the 680. Is there any way to check to see what Curtis' progress has been in the other room? Maybe before we leave in four minutes, we can get a completion angiogram over there because you're going to show us what you have. Jonathan, um, maybe you can sort of check off camera on their progress in the other room. Yeah. Is, um... Hey, Karen, can you check to see how they're doing next door? Yeah, we'll take that. Okay, we're doing another run. I get out of the stent. I don't really want to make little... I, don't, I always think that if I'm in a bare stent with no animal hyperplasia, I must be sending sparks on the inside. Okay, now we're going to give one more nitro, and then we'll go at high speed. Where's the nitro? So you're, you're bringing this pressure? up to... Yes, pressure. You did low, medium, now you're doing high speed. I'm doing high speed, yeah. I've done, I'm going, about ready to go high speed. Then we're going to balloon, then we're going to stent, and then I'm hoping we'll be done. My, one of my nurses is checking... Say again? Okay, thank you. It's sort of nice with the downstream sheets. Yes. Sometimes we do this, we kind of aspirate as we go. They need so, you know, in case you have okay. micro debris, particularly if you go to high speed. You know, the confirmed series clearly show that, you know, kind of lower, mm -hmm. you know, spin speeds and lower uh, catheter tip advancement rates are associated with, you know, uh, fewer okay. uh, complications, less of this sort of slow flow phenomenon. Obviously, the particulate that's generated is you can hear, you can hear that more high small spin frequency be there. Be the pass through the capillary arc. Okay, we're going to exchange with the CXI for the bigger catheter. Grab the weight, uh, John. He is apparently finished ballooning, and I think he's instead of assessing about stenting. Um, I think I'm going to be done here in about help me out here in about four minutes. That would well, be my guess. We have about guess. two minutes, Bill. So. If we, you want to uh, go back uh, to the other room and get completion angios, or should we stick with you? What would you like to do? Okay, our satellite people are suggesting I finish here. Um, and I don't know if we're able to squeeze an extra minute or two on the satellite or not. Hmm. Maybe we can ask that you guys send completion images after. at least. Good. Maybe the CSI booth, you can have the completion yeah. images posted if anyone wants to see how things look uh -huh. afterwards. Yeah, the satellite people are saying we have a, couple, a few extra minutes. Let me have the, we'll exchange out. All right. I want to get a, can I get a Cumpy with a glide? Okay, we're going to exchange out. Let's do the CXI. I got Ruben here next to me, putting up with me for, I don't know, how many years, Ruben? Eight. Eight years. I got Pete and Marissa, other people in the room. Another nurse, Karen's helping out. Next door crew is Rachel and Fernando and Debbie and Kara. A little army of people here. So Bill, actually giving a talk a on Saturday about this kind of stuff. When do you take your Go. sheet out, Bill, after you finish the procedure right now? Um, after my run, I pull it out, and then she'll walk out the door in about an hour and a half. And I was actually wondering if we could take a picture of that, but I guess we'll be off satellite. So I'll, I'll do a little video um, from on my phone. Maybe we can... Chris, can you I'll share in 20 seconds your, your safety experience in the outpatient setting? Sure. Um, you know, I guess I, I would echo um, uh, oh, Bill and okay. Warren's um, um, experience. Um, um, I think it can be done uh, in, a, in, yeah. a, in a very safe way. Uh, we've done about uh, 200 CLI patients uh, in our outpatient lab in the last uh, three years, at Rutherford 4, 5, and 6. And, and still enjoyed um, a fairly good uh, technical success. Um, we had uh, device issues in about 2% of patients, 2.4. Um, we have patient issues in about 5% with um, hematomas or pseudoaneurysms, things like that. So, okay. again, Alf. very low Is rates of uh, complications. Yes. Okay. Um, we had no transfers to the hospital for you know, misadventures in, in that 200 CLI patients. So I think it can be done in an in a, in a organized, well-established um, uh, lab. We obviously didn't start that at first. We, we built into that, and you have to build yeah. your infrastructure to do it properly.
Right. But it can be done in a safe, safe manner. And to add to that, you know, Bill introduced the team down there. Obviously, a, a well-trained, fine-tuned team makes a big difference in you know getting through these cases, you know, effectively and safely. So kudos to everyone. Thank you. You know, uh, one of the things we've actually probably done about somewhere between three and four hundred pedal access in the office, and maybe five or six in the hospital. And one of the frustrations in the hospital is, first of all, they're not used to doing it, but also they have they don't have good res high resolution ultrasound, and you know it. Obviously, if you do something a whole bunch of times, you're going to be a lot better at it. So we, we feel a lot more comfortable in this uh, setting than most people might, might think. And of course, remember, even though it's an advanced access, we put pressure an hour and a half and they go home. We don't have to worry about a pseudoaneurysm. So, Bill, we're fighting the clock, but we can steal okay. some time here. How long do you show us a picture? And then maybe we'll just have Curtis you know, put together some procedural images and outcome images. And I we think put I'm going to have booth. about three minutes I can give you a picture. All right. Try to go. Try to go. So Safely. we're getting the balloon in. I don't want to give you a picture of my wire. Okay, you got the. You got, okay, there we go. This is a six sixty. Is that what kind of balloon I have? I think that patient's probably ready balloon. to get off the table anyway, right? She's doing pretty well. She's. Let's have the insulator. You know, one one thing that uh, ties into safety in the office uh, is the way we sedate our patients. Um, we often sedate our patients who are, you know, obviously have a stent. in Florida with just right. a Valium before the case. Right. Um, and we'll just store that. Store that. Store and, and, uh, uh, that. And that typically does, does the trick. We'll add Versa if we need to. Um, but it's, That's nice. It That's four right. atmospheres. What inflation pressure is that? It's four. Right at four. That's well, pretty amazing, right? Very, very low inflation pressure. Now, I could, I could normally use? I would do this for um, two to three minutes. That's a five uh, millimeter balloon? What, 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 uh, what balloon are you using? It's a, it's a five millimeter balloon, and because I don't have longer time and we're going to stent anyway because there was such a recoil last time, I think that's really the primary problem. We're going to go right for our stent. Three minutes? Yeah. Until the heart out. Okay. You going down? Um, Karen, yeah. is Dr. Anderson has some pictures he wants to show? Are you going to see uh, how things look over here? We can open this mic and you guys can talk to each other. So oh, you can? Okay, can let's do that. Mic. He can? Yeah. Oh, Curtis? Oh, he's going to. What do you say? Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to go bare, bare back to stent, that way we'll keep our sheath size down with this Cook Zilver 518. So you made a decision, you're deploying the stent regardless of the angiographic outcome? Yes, Be, the reason is it had such marked recoil and okay, so uh, she's not real, run. she's very procedure adverse. So. I just think there's a significant chance that if this was, if I was starting again, Virgin, I would, I would just balloon it if I had a good result. Okay. So. Are you, are you switching for a larger sheet okay. now? No, I'm da I, I'm going bareback for the stent to keep the sheath, yeah. so I don't have to upsize. So everybody so I'm understands doing what he's doing. So he doesn't have to raise the profile of the puncture. He's removing the sheath. Exactly. Putting in the uh, the Zilver 518 okay, stent just, bareback and to replace the sheath afterwards for. Uh, uh, hemostasis. Really All right, nice I'm just showing technique. here. We uh, we did some angioplasty, and uh, so this is a lateral knee image again. There's a dissection flap there above the knee, which I think was there at the the last procedure, okay. and I think we need to cover. So uh, we're planning on putting a a 4.5 supera behind the knee. Um, this some. Some of this speaks to the fact that we think there's probably some compression of the artery, which is leading to the, the thrombosis that she develops. So we want to make sure we, we keep that open behind the knee. Right. You've got good flow there, Curtis, right? Okay. That's, uh, that's flowing pretty well. There. Yeah, very good flow. Good, thank you. Bill, I'm getting a notice to stay with the case. We're eager to see how this looks after we deploy this stent. I mean, this is a really nice sort of combination of technology. Obviously, you uh, have the mechanical effect in. of uh, relieving the calcium, oh, changing the compliance, getting good uh, full effacement of the balloon, and now you're yeah. going to scaffold yeah. this with the stent. And Sheath back in. I'm expecting this is going to look really okay. nice and potentially provide a durable. You got to keep that result. together for me. 
You gotta keep it locked. Okay. All being pictures, you gotta keep this together for me. So as I back out, because we don't want that lip, you gotta keep your, keep this together. Help me. You you do it. I can't. I have to hold here. Okay, I got thirty seconds. I'm trying to get my sheath in and get you around. Reason asked about the stenting. I'm gonna actually post dilate it, even though it's a little narrowed. But I'll try to get one picture. So. You got sixty seconds, Bill. Okay, sixty seconds. Yeah. I wonder if yeah. I can get my sheath in by then. So okay. Let's certainly, see. from an evidence base, you might oh. argue that uh, stenting um, is not needed in many cases. Cool. You know, again, the bailout rate has been uh, pretty low in all the CSI data after orbital atherectomy and okay, so angioplasty. As a John, as a final note, as I'm, I want to thank everybody and all the satellite crew and everybody here. And, and on my final, I'm trying to get a final run. I'm actually going to post dilate this stent. You can see there's a little narrowing. I just want to get see if I can get one picture. Give me some contrast. Yeah, so we'll a do picture, a run uh, right now. Any sort of picture, give us a sense that this thing looks pretty good. That'd be wonderful. Okay, so a little. You that. saw a little. I, I, that was all from yeah. the foot. So you can see your super fast flow. Right. So I will now, I wish I could give you a better picture. I'll bring it. That's from my little peewee sheath from below. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to balloon now and get a final picture, and I'll bring it. We're counting down two seconds. Okay, guys, I will see you tonight. Perfect. Yeah, that's a little tune-up, but that obviously is much better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you know, we learned quite a bit during this uh, very interesting uh, interactive live cases. I think we're ready to get back to the main program. Um, appreciate uh, everybody's attendance.